Hello, IP friends. My name is Rita Aurichinda, and you are welcome to IP Series with Rita. Yep. So, if you are yet to listen to episode 97, where I talked about and I reviewed new copyright at 2022, please, have a sister listen. Please stream my podcast. Super, super excited um, for my conversation for today. But I welcome the newcomers, new listeners. Um, what I do here is talk about everything intellectual property from copyright, trademark, creative, industrial design, trade system, plant variety, and geographic education. My returning listeners, you already know the drill. You are welcome back to my podcast. This is episode 98. So we are two more episodes to the 100 episodes. And I trust me, guys, you don't want to miss it. Um, but yeah, let's get into our conversation for today. about this particular episode is how it's connected to the previous episodes if you haven't listened to the episode where i reviewed the nigerian copyright act 2022 that was recently passed um please take your time and listen to it and also take your time to read it because our guest for today uh, is a legal practitioner who serves the creative sector so when i was discussing the collective management organization as a particular category that i listed um, stakeholders and creatives that can be members of that particular CMO. Yeah, so he works with them and I reached out to him when we met on WhatsApp. So don't underestimate WhatsApp, guys. I mean, a lot of things can happen. But yeah, we I reached out to him and he agreed to come speak to us today about what he does and the collective management organization that he, he, he works with. Um, so I'm going to let him introduce himself and you know, we we'll get the conversation going, and yeah, let's hear from our guest. Okay, so welcome, Bentas. Could you tell us your name, what you do, where you're based, and then we'll just kick up the conversation from there. All right, my name is Bentex Tolafia. He is a WIPO alumni and scholar and also a WIPO Law School Pattern X alumni. Bentex is a literary creative writer and entrepreneur. He serves as the National Legal Advisor to the Association of Nigerian Authors, ANA, and Legal Advisor to the Obi Local Government Legislative Council, Nasarawa State, Nigeria. He is an intellectual property IP law rights teacher an IP consultant expert with experience in working with several organizations and creatives to help set up their literary creative projects, push and establish their presence in several parts of the country. He holds a WIPO Masters of Law degree, LLMIP, with specializations in patent law and design law from Ankara University, Turkey, and is currently a PhD IP law student with the Nasarawa State University, KFI, Nasarawa State, Nigeria. Interestingly, he's a published uh, literary author with two books to his credit, Reigns Always in My Country. It's a collection of poetry, which he published in 2010. And then another one, I'm going to say that Bentex is a published literary creative author with two books to his credit. The first is Reigns Always in My Country, which is a collection of poetry that he published in 2010. And another one is Love, Death, Echoes and Ripples, which is a collection of short stories he published in 2023. Wow, that's really recent. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so um, I heard you talk about you being legal for the Authors Association. Let's delve into that conversation. Um, how did you get into it, and who is or who are Anna? All right. Um, I actually joined the association sometime in two thousand and six in Lafayette, Nasarawa State, and um, the association professional organization that promotes the craft of creative writing and serves as a support system for emerging and established 
creative writers, providing resources and guidance as creative writers work, work to hone their craft and build their careers. What Anna does is Anna has a variety of roles, including advocating for the rights of creative writers and raising awareness about the craft of creative writing. The association generally works to ensure that published and unpublished creative writers are fairly compensated for their work and that creative writing is seen as a legitimate form of art and is given the respect it deserves. Anna also provides resources to its members, such as workshops, conventions, we have grants, awards, and prizes. And the association strives to foster an environment of collaboration and mutual support amongst its members and sister bodies. It equally works to connect writers with publishers, literary agents, and other professionals in the industry. The association serves as an educational resource for its members by organizing workshops, seminars, conferences, which actually help creative writers learn more about the craft of literary creative writing and improve their skills. Interestingly, Anna recently started a Creative Writing Institute, which will award diplomas and certificates in various forms of creative writings and trainings. And this is affiliated with the University of Abuja. Oh, wow, that's, that's really interesting and insightful. Yeah. Do you guys have like a category of authors or anyone who general, generally um, just writes? And is Anna affiliated with any collective management organization in Nigeria or internationally? Yes, we, we have uh, categories, of course. We have uh, creative writers, we have poets, we have those who do uh spoken word performances we have people who sing we have people who perform and uh, anna anna stands on its own it's registered with the cac and yes anna is uh, a vibrant and active member of reproduction rights society of nigeria that's repronic and um, the repronic is actually the ncc approved sole cmo or collecting society licensed sometime in 2001 by the Nigerian Copyright Commission to cater for the rights of authors of literary works. Now, literary works here include, but are not limited to books, whether they are fiction or non-fiction, journals, articles, photographs, computer programs, they could be periodicals, magazines, and newsletters. So the use of the word here, author, is not limited to creative writers of book. Also, the word authors is not limited to individual authors alone. It also includes associations of literary right holders and corporate owners of literary work. So what Repronic does is it represents the interest of authors, not only in Nigeria, but in most countries of the world. And this is possible because of its bilateral agreement with the International Federation of Reproduction Rights Organizations, IFRRO and other various foreign collecting societies who represent reproduction rights of authors in foreign nations. The, the responsibilities of reproning as mandated by the government, federal government of Nigeria includes, but is usually not limited to negotiation of royalty payments on behalf of authors. It also includes grant of licenses on behalf of its members to users, collection of royalties on behalf of members, distribution of collector royalties to to other license holders, and then the institution of civil legal actions against any violation of copyright of authors who are its members. The immediate past president of Reproning is Professor Law Bafemi, who is an old time member of ANA and a one time president of the association, while the current president is Mr. Badega Adedapo, who is from the Nigerian Publishers Association. So publishers too are also part of Anna. That's that's interesting to know. Um, yes, of course. <laughs> okay then. So pretty sure you have um come across or at least gone through the new copyright act. Um I would say in my opinion that the act currently caters to the issues that we face in Nigeria. Not on not um you know, despite what is happening internationally, you know 
you know, AI generated works, uh, NFTs, and you know the rest of them. But when you bring it back home, how does this new art um, affect or benefit Anna or authors generally in Nigeria? Um, did you guys impressed with what drafters did, or do you think they should have done a lot more better? Um, with what they provided in the new act. Yes, of course. The thing to understand is that copyright is a form of legal protection for creative writers that grant them exclusive rights to their work. And what the new copyright act actually does is it prevents it prevents others from using the work of the writer or author without the author's permission as well as provides them with the ability to control how others may use their work. For writers, literary creative writers, those of us in ANA, the new act is, uh, is an invaluable tool for protecting our works and ensuring that we are not taken advantage of by people who may attempt to copy or reproduce or photocopy or plagiarize or distribute our works without our consent. As the innovations in the new act by way of protection also assures that creative writers are adequately compensated for their work and are able to pursue legal action if their works are used without authorization. What the new copyright act has done is, in addition to protecting the rights of authors, it also helps to foster creativity and protect the public from piracy through encouraging authors to create new works and gives uh, us writers, both incentives and innovations. And so far, we've had we've been inundated with a lot of um, new things in the industry. The coming of AI, for instance, people use AI, and we know that in other jurisdictions around the world, AI has been, is is fast growing and it's becoming acceptable independently on its own. And the new Copyright Act has done a lot to help us. And we are still looking forward that in, in times to come, there'll be innovations that would strengthen those lapses that are looked to equally help us. But on a general note, this new Copyright Act is a very, very good one. And we really commend the Nigerian Copyright Commission through its DG for this wonderful work. Yeah, I do agree with you as well. Uh, but I would say for me, one of the the sections that actually stood out for me when I was going through it would be um, the special exception for visually impaired, um, the blind, um, special beneficiary category of persons in Nigeria. Now, knowing that we also have authors who are um, disabled, how does Anna in its role protect them or in them, especially with the backing of the new new act now, uh, and also how to engage institutions that want to uh, yeah, yes, uh, one thing to consider is before now, a lot of people don't know that Nigeria is actually a signatory to the Marrakesh Treaty, which uh, is a treaty that. Uh, is done which make provisions for people who are blind or what many would refer to as visually impaired now with this new copyright act which also actively push forward most of these issues at the forefront the association is trying to find a way where every person who writes now gives some sort of permission or go a long way by themselves to ensure that their books are brailed so that they can be available for those who are visually impaired or blind. And what I did with my latest book is I was able to get one of my friends, Mr. Samuel Edem, who I was able to give express permission to braille the books, which I have currently donated to an NGO in Lagos State to ensure that takes care of people who are visually impaired. And during the book launch, of course, I had uh, Mr. Samuel who came forward 
to read braille is he's blind to read braille uh, short stories that uh, that were extracted from my work to members of the public and it was amazing uh, people seeing a blind person walk up to the stage and read from a book that is just produced and i think we've, we've started and we're going to do more to push towards ensuring that this happens wow that's really impressive uh, because like so I, I started teaching last year or I, started, I became a lecturer last year and um, I had the opportunity of invigilating some students, master's students, when they were writing the exams. And we had a visually impaired student who had to come yeah. to write the exams. And I was wondering how she was going to actually do that. So she came in with her laptop, and you know, um, her laptop is already configured in, with the tech that she needs to, like, so you have, and then she does her. And it was amazing to see. But you find that our most yes, have, yeah, they do not have these provisions in terms of books. I, I'm not sure I've seen any real books in the library. Um, so I think Anna needs to engage institution and the government and NCC as well going forward to make sure that um, literary books must we must have real copies in the library. Um, but being Now, to, now let's discuss piracy. Um, I know the Copyright Act now provides for um, copyright owners to, to you know, be proactive in terms of using technological protective measures to protect their, their books from copying and all of that. How does and intend to implement this part of the section that makes um, provision? For any circumvention using technology to, to gain access or remove um, measures that are put in place. Um, we are still working on a, a lot of things. And I know for a fact that usually when someone makes his work available, the next thing is they are usually. Uh, susceptible or vulnerable to having such a work uh, being uh, pirated or plagiarized or reproduced in any format. And while we, we came in as members of the association, I remember a particular saga where we had the first Africa's um, Nobel laureate, Professor Wale Shoinka, who had um, called the attention to the association about his latest work being pirated. That's uh, the one titled The Happiest People on Earth. And we, what we did was we had to approach the Nigerian Copyright Commission and they, they took action. Interestingly, they were able to, to track and locate those who were pirating the books who were already who had already created websites and they were selling these books massively and making serious money out of it. They were able to arrest them and prosecute them and whatever they had made was recovered and uh, dealt with appropriately. And we understand that once your book is out there, the tendency for it to be pirated is usually a very high. As a matter of fact, I have not made uh, e-copies of my book because of just this fear. Because the moment you make your book, especially an electronic copy, trying to track it becomes a problem if you don't know how to do that. And it's a challenge almost every writer in Nigeria goes through. But of course, there are softwares where you could ensure that your work is uh, locked, they are put on, on eBay, on, on websites, and then people who download have to pay. And then once you download the, the book or the work of an author into your device, it is tied to your IP address, such a way that you cannot send it to another person or transfer it to another person and then they'll have access to it, except they have the key to unlocking the book. And these are things we are working on to ensure that writers' work, if they get out there, are protected, not just to have a electronic format or ways where 
their books would be sold, but also ways where their books could be tracked and royalties gotten from it. It's still something, an innovation we are working on, which is not fully on ground. But we are sincerely hoping that we will do this soonest. Fantastic. So let's discuss this too, because you know, any within the IP space, within the creative sector, there's, there's bound to be um, either unauthorized use or um, ownership, authorship, relationship, licensing, assignment, and all of these things. How does Anna deal with um, dispute either amongst members or unauthorized use of a member's um, book or literary work? Um, do you guys actually have your own internal ADR mechanism or do you use so on behalf of the author or do you let them just go to court or explore out of court settlements such as mediation or negotiation or even arbitration as this will be? Yes, well, besides the fact that um, Anna as an association exists to protect the right of authors and to ensure that their works are not misused or stolen, they they also provide support for the development of literary works and promote the exchange of ideas and information among writers. And in order to fulfill these goals, Anna have often had to deal with disputes, especially between their members. And disputes in Anna can arise due to a variety of issues, including copyright infringement, plagiarism, unfair contracts, or other issues related to the protection of an author's IP rights. To resolve these disputes, the association typically has a system in place for, for handling this. And what it does is uh, the association acts as a mediator most times if it's between writers. The process of dispute resolution in Anna typically begins with parties who are involved submitting a written statements or petitions of the dispute to the association. The association then assesses the evidence and arguments provided by both sides and determines the best course of action. Now, depending on the complexity of the issue, the association usually refers the matter to the office of the National Legal Advisor, that's my office, uh, who serves as chairman of the disciplinary committee. And what we do is once we have such a petition, a committee is usually constituted to review the evidence and arguments and make a binding decision, which of course is appealable to the board of trustees of the association. If the board of trustees of the association intervenes and any author or writer or any person for whatever reason seems dissatisfied, they can always approach a court of competent jurisdiction to, to pursue their case but we usually prefer to deal with our issues we have internal mechanisms where we deal and most often about 90 percent of the time we usually succeed about these issues wow that means your your position is actually a, a serious one being that you're a chairman <laughs> I, I need to join Anna, me as a legal practitioner, also as an ADR practitioner. I need to join. Come and join, no. Come and join. We need, we need, we need lawyers. We don't have much lawyers in the association, actually. We need lawyers. Okay, I think that's a new change. Hopefully. <laughs> I, I seriously <laughs> hope it will. I um, and when he does this, I need I need my tight from from Anna, you know. But let's discuss trends, <laughs> copyright trends. <laughs> let's discuss copyright trends in Nigeria um, or internationally. What are those trends that you think are actually going to shake the creative sector, especially for literary um, for literary works? Um, for me, I think the one that kind of stood out was the um, generative AI comic book that was yeah. read initially registered in the U.S. Copyright Office last year, and on, until the registration was, you know, re retracted and given a partial yeah. um, copyright because they had um, elements of AI contribution which the the applicant slash author did not. Um, disclosed while she was um, making her copyright um, 
registration. So that's that's what that stands out for me. But I'll let you just discuss yours and if I think of any other one, I'll also i also contribute as well. But what are those trends that you see um shaking up the creative sector in Nigeria or internationally? Yes, uh we're having trends, we can't deny the they've always been there, just that they've taken um, another dimension. We, we've we always had the internet and uh, social media, which have been able to actually assist authors to reach a wider range of writers, other writers, members of the public, and provide them with much more opportunities to connect, collaborate, and share their work. However, one of the biggest uh, trends that can be expected from Anna is the increased use of uh, technology Members are using technology to create virtual forums where others can communicate and collaborate with another. And while this allows for the exchange of ideas and feedback in real time, which can be incredibly valuable for developing skills and honing craft, the, the rise of this online writing, online writing communities, it's, it's really good. And writers are able to share their work and do a lot of other things, which helps to foster a sense of uh, camaraderie among members and encouraging uh, creative writings. But the problem is that creative writing associations like ANA are also embracing the use of uh, AI to promote their events and activities. And this can, as, as much as it's an effective way to reach out to potential members and spread the word, the, the use of uh, digital platforms for writers like artificial intelligence, blockchain technologies, it's an issue we would have to, to grapple with. And these are trends that we are facing. You could see writers who are strictly doing the publishing thing, some are into book designing, some are just into writing. And recently, into performances like the spoken words and then people who cite their poems or read out their works. And then you could easily find that these are platforms which, if not carefully harnessed, could, as much as they are, they are there to foster or bring solutions to most of these issues that writers have, they can also be dangerous. Looking at how uh, we, we are getting deep fakes, we're having mappings of what people are doing online. So we need to not just adapt, but adapt fast heard situations of people writing stories. You don't need to read too much. You don't need to know anything about literature anymore. With just the click of the button, AI could help you get a full book out. And it's amazing. But, well, it's a trend we are actually trying to follow small, small. We'll do it the Nigerian way, though. Just watch it first. Hopefully, oh, hopefully. <laughs> Okay, so how can one become a member of ANA? Uh, what are the benefits of also being a member of ANA? All right, being a member of ANA has many benefits. Not only does it provide a support network for writers at all levels, it also provides writers with access to resources, networking opportunities, and events. Being a part of ANA provides one with a place to go to for support and advice. And members can connect with other writers of the same field or in other fields, share ideas, resources, and experiences that can lead to collaborations and new opportunities. Now, uh, ANA often provides access to resources, which are good workshops, seminars, which also help writers hone their skills and gain new knowledge. But then, We'll also look at opportunities where we provide access to exclusive writing competitions, grants, and awards. Uh, there currently, there's an opening for the ANA prize and also a um, call for people to submit, writers to submit their works for the ANA review. And these can be great opportunities to not only gain recognition, but also to make money. Networking is an important part of any writer's career, so it's important being part of ANA can provide those uh, opportunities. And then you have to attend conferences and lectures. You meet other writers, writers we've always adored, we've always looked up to as our heroes and industry professionals, as well as make contacts and with them and establish 
relationship. Being a part of ANA can provide access to all those things. Um, actually, our constitution, particularly Article 7 of uh, the ANA Constitution 2012, provides pathways to becoming members of the or a member of the association. There are broadly two categories of member. You can either be the an official member or you could be uh, uh, an associate member or what one will call an honorary member. Now, the full member of the association is a published writer. Now, published in the sense of traditional publishing, it could also be self-publishing, it could also be electronic publishing insofar as your we can trace your, your publishing house, whether it's self-publishing or not. You are qualified to be a full member of the association. And then associate membership are granted to people who are mostly students, um, secondary school students, undergraduate students. We give them associate members. They don't have full rights and um, privileges that all members have. And this membership also extends not just to individuals, but to also corporate organizations. And then we also have life membership, which may be conferred on such present and past members of the association who have made substantial, meaningful, and positive contributions to the advancement of the ideas of the association. So what you need to do is, if you want to be a member in any state where you are, we have about 29 active chapters in Nigeria. You will just have to link you up with either the chairman or secretary of the state branch where you would approach them and then voila, a member just like that. And then you have to be attending book readings, workshops, they organize, interact and get to meet other writers. That's how to become a member. So you also have Ni Nigerians who are not based in Nigeria who are members of ANA, right? Yes, of course. We have a lot of them. A lot of uh, there's this uh, uh, Lindsay Barre, who is actually uh, a Jamaican born but a Nigerian based writer. And when the association was actually established about 43 years ago, those who came together to establish the association were not just only uh, Nigerians. We had people like Ngugi Wationgo who also joined. We had a lot of South African writers. We have writers from all over Africa who came to join Chino Achebe to do this. So we accept membership even outside the shores of the country. Fantastic. Um, you made mention of a competition, but you, you did not tell us what the prize is. So people like me can be like, okay, let, let me just participate. For one. What's, what's the prize? Huh? Now, there are different categories in the in the writing, the call for the prizes, there's the Maria Jima prize, there's the short story prize, there's a poetry prize, there's a, a drama prize, there's a prize for literary criticism, there's the Jerry Agada also prize for uh, indigenous writings, there's the Gimba Abubakar prize. We have so many prizes with mouth-watering uh, amount to win. So if you know you're a writer, um, whatever field that write. <laughs> what, what is money in that we don't, we don't get to, yes, we give we give those prizes at elaborate occasions where we invite writers for all over the country for a convention. We have a dinner and then prizes are awarded, everybody's happy, you know. This prize that is that is very confidential. I mean, this is serious something. Let me let me yes. talk about it. <laughs> let you start. You better, you better go and dust your manuscript and start submitting. <laughs> Sorry. Go, you see my you see my own manuscript and you feel like she actually did it. So um, Amen. Oh. Amen. You know, right now, um, what are your final thoughts basically on copyright in Nigeria? Uh, are we doing a good job building the copyright sector? Um, what, what should we do? The copyright sector is actually growing and growing fast. And there are a lot of things we are meeting which is really, really good. And all writers need to do is just take advantage of all these opportunities where we've come to discover that 
it's not just about writing why the the trend in uh, people's interest in literary creativity has actually so very high which is actually a good thing uh, people poetry and stuff but you find a lot of young people coming in which is good but it's difficult in the industry sometimes uh, trying to separate the real thing from people who do who are mediocre so to say because we have everybody most people who claim to write or does they will do one performance or the other just want to put their work out there and while for every writer a a feedback a good feedback is actually what they look forward to every writer like myself usually feel works that are out there should come with some some feedbacks that are, are critical and positive to helping you grow. And that also includes valid and positive critiquing or criticism as some may look at. And because for Facebook, when you write and you just post on Facebook, you just like it. So everybody just wants you to like, nobody wants you to say you can do better here or there. And even when you go to some of these uh, writing, uh, associations, especially the ones in, in the tertiary institutions, and you begin to speak to them about it, a lot of people begin to feel you're a hater. Why should you, should I perform or bring out my work and then this person thinks it's not good enough? Unfortunately, or should I say fortunately, those of us who were products of the Zaria School of Thought, I, I went to ABU Zaria, and we have such a club called Creative Writers Club, which have actually out uh, very remarkable writers. What they do there is, before you bring your work before the CWC, you need to be really, really sure about what you are doing or else you might end up never, ever writing again. Because when you go through that baptism of fire and the critiquing that comes with your work, if you are not, uh, if you do not have wit or strong emotional support, you will live in tears most often. But what they've always done is to ensure people don't just put up works for the sake of a right when you bring it out whether you're a professor you leave your professorship outside the door the moment you step inside students can challenge you any person can just look at your work and then analyze it for what it is and no hard feelings so writers i think need to read often and widely because reading is a very important of a very creative writer's education which helps to develop the craft in ways we can never imagine we need to develop our own unique style and not be afraid to experiment in trying to find our own voice and to express ourselves. Then we don't need to stop writing. Just keep writing, whatever it is. As the emotions wells up in you, whatever comes to mind, even if it's a line or two, I usually have a jota beside me every time. You just put something down because the tendency to always forget and move on is there. So... I think there are a lot of good things writers will begin to enjoy in the future. Whereas they used to feel writers are very poor people. We should be able to be in Nigeria and make lots of money from our writings. The way people like um, Jim Amanda does outside and some of these great writers we know about. Well, so in the course of, you know, while you were discussing, something just popped into my head. So you see, I'm a writer too. Um, yes, of course you are. <laughs> But uh, I, I kind of felt like our conversation was just so focused, solely focused on literary work. You know, we have the related rights, and that's where the spoken words and recital comes um, in. Yes, of course. And, you know, yes. and now, under the copyright and performance, now have enjoy moral rights, which they never used to enjoy before. So, I don't know if you have your thoughts on, yeah, hear your thoughts on, you know, performance now enjoying uh, moral rights and all the other, you know, having says of how their work will be used uh, going forward and all of those things. So just find out what's on that and then Yes, sir. Uh, the thing is, well, like you rightly said, as much as uh, we have talked a lot about uh, uh, literary creative works, uh, authors, there are a lot of other rights embedded in copyright and that, of course, is not only limited to creative writing. We have a lot of uh, performances, phonograms, and performances that uh, people 
should do and they get money. My associate, Bash Amuneni, who is a celebrity poet and does mostly performance uh, poetry, is making a hell of money from the industry. In fact, the guy's game is so good that he usually performs, he only performs now at very big gigs and he does a lot of mentorship for upcoming um, performance artists besides managing them. And part of what we've been doing, and we've been lucky to have collaborated with the WIPO Nigeria office on some projects, and one of which is um, in, in the celebration of the World IP Day. Uh, one of the collaborations we did with the WIPO Nigeria office was to, in the promotion of the theme of this year's World IP Day, yeah. uh, we brought performance uh, poets, ladies, who performed to the admiration of the director of WIPO Nigeria office and didn't just stop there. They were able to go to the studio to produce something for WIPO and it went viral and the, the, the women were so good, encouraging women and their arts and creativity and all. And part of the benefit of what we did besides the recognition, the international recognition we got is the moral rights from those performances and it was amazing. A lot of them didn't know they could actually have that. And it was really, really good. And then during the World IP celebration day, where a lot of uh, people in the creative and art sector, the IP space converged in Abuja, they also performed and people loved it. It gave them the opportunity to meet other people, get contacts, and they've been be, they are being called for gigs left, right, and center, and they're making money from it besides the moral rights they are getting. And these are things that are really, really interesting that I think every creative out there should be looking forward to. I, I agree with you. I mean, the performance rights currently now, I mean, you can do a whole lot, um, kind of kind of have the same explicit right that other, um, you know, um, copyrighted work like literary work I enjoy, such as um, control of fixation of your work, reproduction of the original fixations. Um, then there's also um, protection of your performance. I mean, the females now enjoy um, their performance have now been protected in Nigeria. There's also um, you know the right for them to object to any mutilation or distortion of their work, and they cannot assign their moral right, and which is something that. Most creatives do not pay attention to when they are signing contracts and all of those things. Um, yes, because you know, you know, it's 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 really so bad that um, most times about twenty, just about twenty percent or about fifteen percent creatives bother to enter into any contract at all when they want to to do something that has to do with their IP. Generally, for uh, I notice the experience with, with writers generally is you approach uh, a publishing house or a printer's shop, and then you ask them, I, I have a book, I have a manuscript that I want to publish, make into a book. And then they, they look at it, they ask you how many copies, and then you tell them the copies, they give you an amount, you just pay and then they produce, and then they give you, you just, if you like, you can put it under your bed. They don't market for you. They don't promote you. They don't do anything beside the fact that they produce that work for you without entering into any contract. And then you do your marketing. Sometimes you have to have to pull strings, meet a lot of people. And when those uh, are finally paying off where you have some of the books listed to, to be be used in schools for either their JSC or whatever. This same publisher now comes to sue to claim rights. And most times they, they, they succeed because you don't have any valid contracts that stop them from publishing after doing the first work. Besides the fact that when they tell you your book is out of print, they still produce and sell in the market when you think your book is not there. So a lot of us don't even go into any contract at all. We just see something going to, to happen, I'm given a platform, and that's all. And then yeah. by the time you discover there's so much benefit 
from your sweat which other person is benefiting from it becomes too late and these are the things we are trying to talk to to creatives about always enter into valid contracts that would be beneficial to you of course should be also beneficial to the other person but you should not be cut out of the whole process and left hanging after all it's your ip we're talking about I do agree with everything you said in terms of the contract because I've also thought about why piracy keeps thriving in Nigeria, especially for, for literary authors. And good thing now that the new copyright act under section 48 provides that any person carrying on business of production or reproduction of work, including publishers, printers, producers, manufacturers, advocates of work that has copyright elements should keep a record of the name of the author, title of the, the work, the date of use or production, quantity of the work used or produced. This is where the issue starts from. I mean, piracy. Yes. I'm asking you yes. 50. And you did 100 and gave me 50. Yes. Just so you can monetize uh, 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 and make money off me. You know? Yes. So, also good to see that they, ha they have like a minimum sanction now that anyone that fails to keep record or uh, makes false entry in the record, I mean, and you're producing or section is provided in terms of what publishers and you know manufacturers need yes. to keeping records and the rights that copyright owners can actually um you know enforce going forward. But it's been an interesting conversation and I look forward to seeing um what Anna does. I don't I don't I don't think there's a presence of Anna in, in River State, but I look forward to also collaborating with there you. is there is I, I I know for a fact that the, the chairman is a, a well respected chief in in uh, River State. His name is uh, Chief Adiwali. Don't worry, I'll send you his contact. It's Adiwali. Very great guy. <laughs> the, 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 Anna in, the Anna in River State is actually very vibrant. It's just that uh, maybe you've not been opportune to hear anything about being in their circle and all. They are really great and they are doing really awesome stuff. And part of what we do annually is also we give grants to state chapters to enable them to uh, do something, to create some presence and activity and we've been fortunate to have uh, Yusuf Ali, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who actually has endowed uh, 3 million naira to the association annually. And what we do with this money is we ensure every state chapter gets uh, some amount of the money to assist them pursue literary creative activity in their state. And so far it's been awesome because we do not have just, we don't keep it to just one program. Some years we have literary creative functions for primary schools for some years, secondary schools for some years. It's for tertiary institutions. Uh, I was actually privileged to also be a beneficiary of that while I was in the university. It's an endowment that has been there for long. And I think the pioneer one, which I was part of, was the Anna Yusuf Ali uh, Literary Creative Writing Workshop for students of tertiary institutions. And about 48 of us cutting across all tertiary institutions in Nigeria were selected after making entries. And we were kept for a, for a workshop in Abuja for two weeks and giving some stipends. It was really amazing. It did a lot of good for me, I can say. And all those who participated yeah, yeah. are also doing well. You are motivating me right now. Look at all the benefits that I'm just <laughs> hearing that Anna does. Oh, I really need to do it. I need to do a lot better. Need to do better. Better come and start chopping our money too. <laughs> ah, we are here for the money. Eh? <laughs> oh, money. Oh, yeah, money. Oh, oh, yeah, money. Joy. No, no, it's no longer money. money. It's data money. You know, they say data is key right now. So, yes, right here for what yes. I have money. Whether it's only money, whether it's uh, data, data money. <laughs> so far as it ends with money. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Currency, pounds, dollars, naira, anyone. Ah, yeah. she never finished Nigerian <laughs> currency. She got to go pounds, dollars. It's okay. Oh. It's okay. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's good to have this conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you. Too. Thank you. Same here for the opportunity. Uh, thank you so much. Um, so I hope you had a good time because I did.
I did too. So thank you so much for the opportunity, Rita. It's amazing what you do, and I'm really, really grateful. We thank God for people like you. Thank you. Let's catch up later. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you so much and have an amazing midweek. Take care. Bye. 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 And so is a wrap for episode 58. Thank you once again, Ben Tech, for coming on our podcast to discuss um, rights of authors and what they need to know about copyright. Um, we have two more episodes to our first 100 episodes. Super excited, guys. But yeah, thank you, thank you to all my AP friends who have stuck with me all through this period. I will keep doing my best. Um, I hope you guys learned a thing or two because I did and trust me guys I really did and I had um, a swell time recording this but yeah let's look forward to um, the next two episodes and do have a fantastic evening guys don't forget to like share subscribe and you know just show some love man show love yeah